Our good friends at Quick Trip hit me and said, if you could snap your fingers and be transported to the sidelines of any moment in college football history, where would you go? Well, I couldn't settle on one. I put three down. I would go to the kick six at Jordan-Hare Stadium back in 2013 in the Iron Bowl because that was the last year that I didn't get to go cover games. I couldn't afford to go. So I, 2014 was the year I started being able to get credentialed and go to games. 2013 was like right when I was getting into the television side of the business. And I'd done radio, but I, I didn't have the status to be credentialed to go to those games. And so I'm sitting in there in Harris County, Georgia, watching along with the rest of the world. And there goes Davis. There goes, they're going to win the game. They're going to win the football game. The late Rob Bramblett there, by the way. Rest in peace, Rob. So I would go there, and I would be part of that scene, the aftermath, if you want to call it that, of the kick six. Now, here's the thing. We've been part of several field stormings since that day, and we were on the field for like four of them last year. The crazy thing about a field storming is if you've never been a part of one, you have no clue what that's like because you only have seen it from the, the wide angle or the all 22 top of the stadium angle or mostly like on ESPN or CBS especially, they use that spider cam angle where that's the camera that moves across the field and it gives you a great overlay. It gives you a great view of what's happening, but that's not the view you have. If you're down there in the trenches, you can't see. And so all you're thinking to yourself is there's probably a memorable scene happening right now within this bigger memorable scene. Like there are interactions happening. Uh, there, there could be players from opposing teams jawing face to face. There, there could be fans doing all sorts of crazy things like they did at Neyland Stadium during the Bama game. But the thing about it is you can only see like six inches in front of you. So you're, you're petrified that there's something memorable happening down there and you're missing it because you're not able to capture it. Anyway, first world problems. The next one is I would go back to the national championship game, 2005 at the Rose Bowl, USC, Texas. Vince Young runs it in to the right pylon there. I get to see Matt Leinart. I get to see Reggie Bush. I get to see Mac Brown in his prime at Texas. I get to see Pete Carroll's vintage USC teams. I get to see possibly the greatest national championship game ever played. And as you know, I'm a big proponent of going to big events in this era. I don't care if it's the National Championship game, WrestleMania 18 at the Sky Dome, Rock versus Hogan. I'm a big fan of watching big moments from this year and this time period. The Red Sox won the World Series in 04, and I am by no means a Red Sox fan. But those are big, seminal moments I remember in sports from that five- or six-year time frame. The reason I'm so big on it is because that's the last era that was sort of pre-cell phone or pre-smartphone in a sense that cell phone technology was rapidly advancing to the point where you could really record good video. And so this is the last of the flash bolt era. This is the last of go pick up a disposable camera at Publix on your way to the game or bring your own camera to the game. Big moment happens, and you can tell how big it is by how many flash bulbs there are around the stadium. But really, by and large, people were smart enough to realize I'm not going to capture this moment better than my memory and my mind and my eyeballs can capture it. So let me put the camera away. Let me just fully invest myself emotionally in this moment. That's why crowd noise, I think, was better across the board back then than it is now. Because a lot of people, when they're recording on their phone, they don't want to ruin the video by yelling. I wouldn't either. Um, having said that, it takes away from the in-stadium environment. So that whole time period there, not to mention it was a great game, I would love to transport myself back there. And also, I don't care which game it is, although there are some favorites, take me back to the Orange Bowl, take me back to Doak, take me back to vintage FSU Miami games. Because they still play every year, and hopefully, fingers crossed, like we can get back to the intensity that it was like in this much more grainy footage that I'm showing you here, but wide right, missed kicks. Uh, you've got Miami in the national championship hunt every year. You got FSU in the national championship hunt every year. And it's the must see rivalry game in the sport. I know that my 18 year old crowd right now is listening to me saying, hold up, what? The must see, what? they're like 10 games I'd rather see than that. Well, right now in your lifetime, that may be accurate. It wasn't always like that. First off, you guys need to know the Orange Bowl used to be a whole lot more than just a game with branding on it played in Hard Rock Stadium. It used to be a venue, and it used to be a very intimidating venue, not necessarily because the architecture overwhelmed anyone. 
It's quite the opposite. It was dingy. It was grimy. It was dirty. The team that played in there, though, had some of the baddest players in the country. And then FSU came in there every other year. And the years that they didn't come in there, Miami went up to Doak in Tallahassee, and it was must-see, man. Intensity off the charts. Um, just an unbelievable kind of display of everything that's great about rivalry college football. And a lot of those guys were going to go on to play on Sundays, but you could, you could tell for many, many more of them that was the apex of their career. That could have been the apex of their lives. And for a lot of us every year, it was the apex of our college football viewing experience, watching FSU versus Miami. Um, I hate that the Orange Bowl's gone. Like, even if this rivalry elevates back to a, a premier form, and who knows, this year maybe it could be, the romanticism of playing football in the Orange Bowl, that's not something you can just readily get back. So now, I'm a big believer that Hard Rock can be a much better environment than it has been for Miami. Go back to the Notre Dame game in the late 20-teens as a case study on what that could be in a big Saturday environment. Man, there wasn't anything down there like the Orange Bowl, though. 